Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair brings you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, written by Al Lewis. For many teachers throughout the country, the past week marked the beginning of a new semester. And for Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, it was quite a busy time. Thanks to our beloved principal, Osgood Conklin, it was even busier for me than for the rest of the faculty. For in addition to my school duties, he had me typing reports at home in the evenings. All week long, I didn't have a moment to myself. And worse than that, I didn't have a moment to Mr. Boynton. <laughs> Friday morning at breakfast, I couldn't help bending my landlady's sympathetic ear. So you see, Mrs. Davis, not only have I spent the past four nights working for nothing, but I haven't been able to spend any time with Mr. Boynton. That's a shame, Connie. But why did you take on all that extra work? You told me yourself you volunteered to do it for Mr. Conklin. Of course I volunteered. I'm too young to face a firing squad. <laughs> but it's not the work I mind. There's something else that bothers me. Now, look, Connie. I know that Mr. Boynton is tall, dark, handsome, charming. That's he's what all... bothers me. <laughs> it's where he's been while I've been busy. Mr. Boynton? Why, he's probably been at home every night, twiddling his thumbs. You're wrong, Mrs. Davis. He's been at Miss Enright's three nights in a row. And for all I know, he's been twiddling her thumbs. <laughs> I don't think you have to worry about Miss Enright, Connie. She may be a capable English teacher, but when it comes to looks, she's no competition. I don't know about that. She's quite an attractive person these days. These foggy days, that is. <laughs> I appreciate this pep talk, Mrs. Davis, but I'd better get ready to leave. Walter Denton said he'd pick me up early. Good, Connie. That'll give you a chance to plan your counterattack. If you really believe that the enemy has secured a foothold in your territory, you've got to get busy and storm the heights. You're so right. Boynton Heights, here I come. <laughs> I'm glad you were prompt this morning, Walter. There's something I want to attend to before my first class. I know, and I hope he's in his biology lab when you get there. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't mean to pry into your personal life. Good, let's keep it that way. <laughs> but I couldn't help noticing how little you and Mr. Boynton have seen of each other during the past week. Now listen, Walter. Oh, I know it's because of all the extra work you've had to do. Well, even Harriet Conklin, our principal's own daughter, told me she thought he's been driving you like a horse. Oh, I don't know. I always whinny while I work. <laughs> and you've noticed something else, too. Miss Enright hasn't let any grass grow under her feet. Please, Walter, Miss Enright's gardening problems don't interest me. <laughs> you know what I mean, Miss Brooks. She's had dates with Mr. Boynton one night after another. Walter, I know you're fond of me and mean to be helpful. But if this intensely personal conversation doesn't stop, I'll get out and walk to school. Gosh, Miss Brooks, I didn't mean to intrude on your privacy, but it just happens that I have a wonderful plan to get Mr. Boynton out of Miss Enright's clutches once and for all. You want to hear it, Miss Brooks? How can I help it? I'm not going to get out and walk to school. <laughs> <laughs> but now you're talking. Oh, the scheme is very simple. We just fight fire with fire. For the past three nights, Mr. Boynton has had dinner at Miss Enright's place. Everybody knows that. What does she live in, a television studio? <laughs> Please, Miss Brooks, you'll stop the flow. Sorry. Obviously, Mr. Boynton keeps coming back there because he gets some good food, and the price is right. Hence, the old saying is proved again, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Well, that may be one of the better routes, Walter, but how do we interrupt Miss Enright's regularly scheduled trips? <laughs> That's where the fighting fire with fire comes in Please, Walter, burning down a fellow teacher is arson No, you don't burn her down You simply tap the same source that she uses for tempting recipes Then you invite Mr. Boynton to your lair Your place <laughs> Well, what is her source of recipes? Miss Dugan's domestic science class The girl's learning to cook at the best recipes you've ever seen And Miss Enright borrows them? Sure after school, she takes them right off the bulletin board in Miss Dugan's room. And they print new ones every day. 
And Harriet tells me they're so simply written that a submoron could follow the instructions. Uh, thanks, Walter. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way, Miss Brooks, but I know you haven't had much experience cooking, and You're I... You're right, Walter. Mrs. Davis does all our cooking. Well, Harriet's going to meet us at school this morning and take you into the domestic science class for a little brush-up. And then you invite Mr. Boynton to dinner tonight and let nature take its course. Well, here we are. Uh, you get out, Miss Brooks, and I'll find a place to park. All right, Walter. Oh, I keep forgetting. You've got tin slats where the doors should be. <laughs> Give me a hand, will you? Oh, sure, Miss Brooks. Uh, uh, there you go. Oh, the corrugated tin looks nice instead of doors, doesn't it? I got the idea from the new Hudson. The new Hudson? Yeah. Uh, this is the car you step down out of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's Harriet. Brooks, Walter. Hi, Harriet. Uh, take our charge in tow. I'll just be a couple of minutes. Okay, Walter. See you later. Come on, Miss Brooks. Let's go in. All right, Harriet. You seem to be the doctor. You just leave this thing to us, Miss Brooks. We'll have that certain part eating out of your hand in no time. If I break any more dishes at home, he'll have to. <laughs> now, here's our plan, Miss Brooks. Mr. Boynton's favorite dish is Boston stew. Boston stew? How do you know? Miss Enright pumped him for it yesterday. Seems like a lot of trouble to go to. <laughs> now, if Miss Enright suggests Miss Dugan is going to get the best possible recipe for Boston stew and put it on the bulletin board sometime today. Then Miss Enright will stop by and... Excuse me, Harriet. I think I'll drop into the domestic science room for a minute. I knew you'd catch on. I've got to stop by Daddy's office, but I'll join you in a little while. We've still got some time to brush you up on some fundamentals. All right, Harriet. <laughs> well, if it isn't Miss Brooks. Miss Enright. What brings you to the domestic science room, darling? Oh, I've always been domestic. Only nowadays, you've got to make a science out of it. <laughs> well, if I've said it once, I've said it a dozen times. The way to a man's heart is through his stomach. By now, that should seem like the old ox road to you. <laughs> I suppose you're referring to my constant dinner companion of the past week. Yes, I am. While I was home alone working overtime, you were home with Mr. Boynton working overtime. And I don't think it's fair, Miss Enright. All's fair in love and war, darling. You're just loaded with goodies today, aren't you? <laughs> After all, if Mr. Boynton likes good food prepared with loving care, who's to prevent him from getting it? If I may borrow one of your best used cliches, two can play at that game. I'm going to prepare a dinner for Mr. Boynton that he'll never forget. You? Oh, darling, you're not the type. Think of the time and money you spend in a beauty parlor to make yourself uh, fairly presentable. <laughs> kitchen would play havoc with your fragile charm. You don't say. Well, for your information, Miss Enright, food can be cooked just as well on a pretty modern range as it can on an old pot-bellied stove. <laughs> Are you inferring that... If the girdle fits, wear it. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. No other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Proof that Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Two years' research at leading universities using Colgate Dental Cream, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice history on tooth decay. Conclusive proof that when teeth are brushed with Colgate's right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Yes, the toothpaste you use to clean your breath while you clean your teeth now offers a safe, proved way to reduce tooth decay. Modern science shows decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate's, as directed, helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Colgate Dental Cream has been proved to contain all the necessary ingredients including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. Get Colgate Dental Cream today. Big economy size, only 59 cents. Always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay before it starts. Remember, no other dentifrice offers proof of such results. <laughs> Well, when 
lunch period came, I hastened toward the school cafeteria to invite Mr. Boynton over for dinner. As I passed the principal's office, however, the door opened and I heard Mr. Conklin murmur, Halt! <laughs> Step into my office a moment, Miss Brooke. Aye, aye, sir. Sit down, please. Thank you. Since this is your lunch hour, I'll be brief. I just want to tell you that I appreciate your getting out that typing during this past week. Oh, you're welcome, Mr. Conklin. Well, see you later. Uh, one moment, please. The spirit with which we tackled a difficult task was most admirable. In fact, as I watched your fingers flying over the keys, putting in carbon paper, second sheets, making erasures, oiling and cleaning the machine, then washing up and starting all over again, I realized that to me this wasn't work at all. To you it wasn't. <laughs> No, indeed. It was actually, well, fun. Now, there's another report I must have typed, about 30 pages. 30 pages? Uh, yes, yes. One long evening will do it. Oh, good for her. Those Chinese secretaries are really marvelous. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse uh, me, Miss I... Brooks. I'll be over at your home about seven tonight. Mr. Conklin, don't you think you've been a little partial to me lately? Partial? With these honorary jobs, I mean. You know how carefully we teachers try to avoid making pets out of any students, and, well, you've got to be doubly careful in your high office not to pet any teachers. I mean, uh, <laughs> show any partiality. Look, I'd like to make a suggestion. Mine is an ever-open mind, Miss Brooks. I know. <laughs> Why don't you give some other teacher the opportunity of working with you tonight? Uh, who, for instance? Well, it's not my place to mention names, but I'm sure Miss Enright would love the opportunity. Miss Enright, eh? She is a competent sort of an individual. Even more competent than some I've used. Yes, yes. I, I think I'll ask her about it right now. Oh, don't ask her now, Mr. Conklin. Surprise her. Just drop over to her place tonight with the work under your arm. But how can I be sure she'll be at home? She'll be at home, all right. If you'll just get there at 7 o'clock sharp, Mr. Conklin, I can promise you, you'll find Miss Enright cooking, with and without gas. <laughs> it's nice to be having lunch together again, isn't it, Mr. Boynton? Oh, it's more than nice, Miss Brooks. It is? It certainly is. This goulash is terrific. That's all right for cafeteria food, I guess, but there's nothing like a home-cooked meal. Don't you think so? Oh, I sure do. I've been very fortunate that way during this past week. I've had a couple of home-cooked meals. You've had three, but who counts? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm so subtly suggesting, Mr. Boynton, is that you have dinner at my place tonight, for a change. Your place? Yes, I thought I'd prepare dinner for two. Perhaps some special recipe you're fond of? Well, I wish you'd ask me sooner, Miss Brooks. I've promised to have dinner with Miss Enright tonight. Not again. Yeah, not again. Walter. <laughs> Walter, how long have you been eavesdropping behind that history book? Oh, I haven't heard a thing, Miss Brooks. I was just thinking about what to go and get at the steam table. Well, you're excused any time, Walter. Oh, thanks, Mr. Boynton. But all I can say is anybody that'd eat dinner with Miss Enright instead of a certain other English teacher must have some of his marbles missing. Walter! <laughs> I can't understand his attitude. Oh, I, I guess he just doesn't like Miss Enright. I can understand his attitude. <laughs> Look, Mr. Boynton, I happen to know that Miss Enright will be extremely busy this evening. Mr. Conklin's bringing her a report to type. Mr. Conklin, are you sure? It was the least he could do. But don't worry about your dinner engagement, Mr. Boynton. All you have to do is transfer your appetite to my table. Well, if Miss Enright is going to be busy, I guess I could accept your invitation. Got to eat somewhere. <laughs> You're too gracious. Is it a date? Oh, it's a date. But, Miss Brooks, did I understand you to say you were going to cook the dinner? Certainly. Well, that's strange. I never thought you knew anything about cooking. Oh, you'd be surprised. I know some very strange things about cooking. <laughs> brings you to the domestic science room. You'll see, Harriet. I'm glad the others have all gone. Yeah, there. Yeah, it's up. What is it, Walter? What did you put on the class bulletin board? 
It's a recipe for Boston stew. I printed it myself. You printed it? Sure. I got the idea when I heard Mr. Boynton say he was having dinner with Miss Enright tonight. But Walter, you don't know anything about Boston stew. What ingredients did you use in the recipe? Believe me, Harriet, what I printed in this recipe would be banned in Boston. <laughs> Golly, it's not poisonous, is it? Of course not. Just pleasantly sickening. <laughs> now, we better get out of here before old Enright comes in. Boy, this will teach you to try and take up all Mr. Boynton's time just because Miss Brooks is busy working on her. Miss Dugan! Oh, Miss Dugan! Oh, I guess everybody's gone home. Uh-oh. What's this on the bulletin board? Recipe for Boston stew. Now, that's what I call a coincidence. Come to Connie, baby. <laughs> Mr. Boynton should be here soon, Mrs. Davis. How is the Boston stew coming along? Uh, all right, Connie, but there's so many strange ingredients. I must have 15 things cooking in four different pots. <laughs> How does it look to you? Well, frankly, Mrs. Davis, it looks like the stuff they pulled the big mo out of. <laughs> but it must be a good recipe, or it wouldn't have been tacked on the bulletin board. Now, then... Did you saute the codfish balls in beef gravy and baste the frankfurters with molasses? I did, Connie. And did you stuff the olives with shredded wheat before frying them? Yes. And now I'm just bringing the horseradish and turnip greens to a slow boil, Henry. <laughs> Good. And now we come to the main part of the recipe. Wait a minute, I'll read it for you. Under a low flame, gently stir codfish balls in shallow pan while adding one cup popcorn. <laughs> Add bay leaves and wintergreen lifesavers. <laughs> then fold in three cups peanut brittle. <laughs> Garnish with diced carrots and allow to simmer in one bottle of warm Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> well, every man to his own taste, I suppose Oh, it was very nice of you to help me with this cooking, Mrs. Davis But remember now, it's our secret Of course, dear As far as Mr. Boynton is concerned Your loving hands alone prepared this masterpiece Now, I'll just take my coat and be running along, Connie I'm having dinner at my brother Victor's house You told me that before, Mrs. Davis What time are you due at Victor's? Six o'clock uh, what time is it now, Connie? 6.30. Then I better hurry. I wouldn't want to be late. <laughs> it's Victor's birthday today, you know. You told me that before, too. Really? I am getting absent-minded. Now, where did I put his present? Oh, here it is on the cupboard shelf. Six nice golf balls. See? Yes, they're very pretty. Wait a minute, Mrs. Davis. There are only five golf balls here. Oh, that's all right. Victor never plays golf anyway. <laughs> well, I'll be going now, dear. Just let the Boston stew simmer for another few minutes and then turn off the gas. I may not have to turn off the gas. This stuff looks strong enough to blow it out. <laughs> oh, that must be Mr. Boynton now. I'll just slip out this back door and be on my way. Lots of luck with the dinner, dear. Thanks again, Mrs. Davis. Wish your brother a happy birthday for me. I will. Good night. Good evening, Miss Brooks. Welcome, Mr. Boynton. Let me put your umbrella in the closet. This is Miss Enright. <laughs> Sorry. They both have the same type frame. <laughs> Come in, I suppose. Thank you, darling. Give me your coat, Mr. Boynton. I'll hang it up for you. Oh, thank you. Here's my coat, dear. Just throw it over that chair. <laughs> Your hospitality is overwhelming. Uh, you see, Miss Brooks, I took the liberty of bringing Miss Enright along for dinner because we did have a prior date and she didn't have anything else to do. But what about... Mr. Conklin? Well, fortunately, he phoned me about that typing assignment you arranged for me. But I told him that as much as I'd love to help him, I couldn't because of my sore finger. What sore finger? The one that got better as soon as I phoned Mr. Boynton. <laughs> But now that we're here, I don't see why we can't have a fairly jolly dinner party. 
Oh, I'll bet you've got a swell dinner ready. Mm-hmm. What, what's that I smell? Is it coming from the kitchen? I wouldn't be surprised if it was running from the kitchen. <laughs> I guess I'll have to set another place at the table Don't now. you lift a finger, darling. I'll set my own place and pitch right in like a good little sport. We girls have to stick together, you know. I'm stuck with you, all right. <laughs> well, I'm going into the kitchen, if I may, and help carry things out when they're ready. All right, Mr. Boynton. Oh, I'll answer the door. You just go on back to the kitchen. Oh, don't worry about me, Miss Brooks. I'm pretty handy around the house. Yeah, the wrong house. <laughs> <laughs> Hiya, Miss Brooks. I knew you were going to be all alone tonight, so I got permission from my folks to eat with you. Uh, can I come in? Why not? Although about my being oh, alone... Oh, I've got a story to tell you that'll really cheer you up. I can use it. Come into the dining room, Walter. We're about ready to start. Oh, swell. Of course, I've got a date with Harriet tonight, so I'll have to go right after dinner. But I want you to hear the rib I pulled this afternoon. Well, I... if it isn't one of my favorite pupils, how are you, Walter? Miss Enright, but I... Well, didn't you expect me either? We're all being surprised tonight, aren't we? Well, I put everything in this big platter, Miss Brooks. Oh, oh hello, Walter. Oh, well, hello, Mr. Boynton. Uh, what are you doing here? I was invited. So was Walter. We're all invited. <laughs> now, let's sit down and get this over with. Uh, start eating, shall we? <laughs> fine, fine. Uh, I- I'll be the papa bear and do the serving. <laughs> Here's yours, Miss Enright. Thank you. I think. <laughs> Here's your dish, Miss Brooks. Thank you. Now you, Walter. Oh, boy, I'm starved. Well, go on and eat, my boy. This is food that's fit for a king. Yeah, I'll try one of these round things first. Uh, oh, oh, this is kind of slippery. Look out, Walter, it's rolling off your plate. <laughs> I caught it on the fourth bound. <laughs> Here you are. Say, this is a pretty strange kind of food. It says Spalding Crow Flight on it. Spalding Crow Flight? Don't give it another thought. Victor never plays golf anywhere. <laughs> Just what kind of a dish is this, Miss Brooks? Oh, can't you tell? This is Boston stew. Oh, well, sure, anybody knows that. You can tell at a glance that this is good old... Boston stew! <laughs> The recipe wasn't on the bulletin board in the domestic science room. You took it, Miss Brooks. Why not? First come, first served, I always say. Now, let's dig in, shall we? Uh, But, Miss Brooks... You better start eating, Walter. Remember what you told me. You've got to go right after dinner. I know, but this isn't the way I want to (laughs) go. I gotta talk to you privately for a minute Come on into the kitchen Hey, excuse us, folks Just continue eating, won't you? I'll be back as soon as I see what's wrong with Walter What is it, Walter? What's the trouble? That recipe for Boston stew That didn't come from the domestic science teacher I printed that myself You? Sure, that was the rib I started to tell you about I thought Mr. Boynton was gonna have dinner with Miss Enright So I wanted to fix her wagon I just put down everything I could think of in that recipe. Oh, this is terrible. I've got to stop them. Yeah, you better. I'm going to take a powder out the back way. If Miss Enright finds out about this, she'll kill me. And if she doesn't, it's my turn tomorrow. <laughs> uh, listen, folks, don't touch the... Where's Miss Enright? The strangest thing happened, Miss Brooks. She took one spoonful of the stew and got the most peculiar look on her face. <laughs> and then she excused herself and ran out the front door. I don't know what got into her. I do. (laughs) Mr. Boynton, please... She never acted that rudely before. I can't understand Well, never mind that now. I hope you didn't taste that stew. Taste it? Well, I've eaten two plates of it. (laughs) Oh, it's delicious, Miss Brooks. Well, I feel warm all over. Just... (laughs) Just goes to prove the old saying, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Mr. Boynton, with two plates of that stew in there, the super chief couldn't get through. (laughs) Eve Arden, as our Miss Brooks, returns in just a moment. But first, 
Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives K. Dumas magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Not a soap, not a liquid. Luster cream shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, luster cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a luster cream shampoo. So gentle, luster cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try luster cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, Mr. Boynton was so grateful for the Boston stew, he could hardly wait till the dishes were finished before inviting me to a movie. But as we headed for the closet to get our coats, the front door opened and a familiar voice murmured, Hope! <laughs> Mr. Conklin. Oh, hello, Boynton. Well, Miss Brooks, since Miss Enright has a bruised finger tonight, I brought over this 30-page report and I'm going to let you type it. Thanks a million. Oh, gosh, Mr. Conklin, well, we were planning to see a movie. Well, you'll have to go alone, Boynton. This is business. Oh, awfully sorry, Miss Brooks. I'll go get my coat out of the closet. All right, Mr. Boynton. Mr. Conklin, can't this typing be postponed? I'm afraid not. This is so important, I even skipped my dinner so that we could buckle right down to work. Uh, by the way, while we're working, I could use a little snack. Do you have anything around that I could eat? Eat? Yeah. I have just the thing for you, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Mr. Boynton. Uh, yes, Miss Brooks? Stick around. I'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, and Mary Jane Croft. For a beauty bath that brings you glamour from head to toe, get bath size plum olive soap. Yes, ladies, for a velvet smooth beauty lather that caresses your skin, leaves your whole body glowing with a warm blush of fragrant loveliness, enjoy a beauty bath with bath size palm olive. It's perfect for your tub or shower. Just the gentlest massage over your body creates a glorious lather that leaves your skin delightful. Yes, for the most luxurious bath you've ever had, get big bath size palm olive soap. At this time, the Colgate Palm Olive Peat Company salutes the American Dental Association, sponsors of National Children's Dental Health Day, tomorrow, February 6th. Colgate Dental Cream is proud to have contributed vital research in the fight against tooth decay. The American Dental Association recommends these three important steps in helping eliminate tooth decay. One, regular visits to your dentist. Two, proper diet. Three, brush teeth immediately after eating. Colgate Palm Olive Pete joins America's 75,000 dentists in urging that you begin now to instruct your children in this important dental care. Help guarantee healthier, sounder citizens for the future. Be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.